thanks for um, you know giving us a few minutes here, and you've obviously inspired a, a lot of, of action in us. And I know we've been going back and forth, and you're extremely busy, so we really appreciate your time this morning and afternoon. Welcome. Where are you about in the world? Um, in the north west of England. Okay. And oh Lord, I can hear it. I can. I can <laughs> tell. Is um, <laughs> is is school in session over at Oxford? They just started. Okay. Okay. Um, so starting Oxford, to pick up for you. Oxford and Cambridge start much later than other universities do. Gotcha. gotcha. Well, why don't I w I'd like to give you a brief kind of elevator pitch in, in what David and I are, are hoping to do because it, so much of it is inspired by you. Um, and then if you have just a few minutes to, to let us know thoughts or the rundown. Um, but, but essentially, you know, over the last nine months or so, um, I was spending time on Facebook realizing, wait a minute, these 2,500 friends I have on Facebook, I don't actually know who any of them are anymore. Um, mm -hmm. So I was incredibly fed up, did some very late night research, stumbled upon you, D Dunbar's number, in a TED talk or two or three. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, there, there must be a better way for us to make it ridiculously easy for people to get off Facebook and back meeting up in person. And then we were like, well, let's just create the platform where, like you say, um, we make it incredibly easy for, for people to meet up with 150 people that um, they wouldn't be embarrassed to join for a drink uninvited at, at a bar. Um, and so that's, that's what we're trying to create. Um, and our thought at least is the easiest way to nudge people to do that in, in kind of a minimum viable product is by offering people discounts or promotions at partnered restaurants if they show up with a friend together. Um, and that's essentially it. We're, it's, it's me, David, and one other developer, uh, a good friend who, who couldn't make this call, unfortunately. Um, and um, one thing we're really trying to focus on is ease of use and ease of scheduling. Sure. The best part about what you were talking about in one of your TED talks was your average boy's phone call is seven and a half seconds or something. That yeah, can't be exactly. a right? Seven and a, yeah, seven point three seconds. It, I was it's like, just, it's a slight it. exaggeration, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. kind of true. Exactly. It, how do we get that same exaggeration, but not for two guys meeting us? How do I make it as easy as possible to get five of my boys together? To go out for a drink, you know. So uh, we're just trying to really focus on the ease of scheduling as well. Um, so it's something we're really yeah. About. And so in in terms of kind of the the first thing we're putting out into life is this very easy platform, simple to use, where just about the only functionality on the platform, you know, no statuses, no feeds, no status games, um, and, and hierarchical kind of kind of things. Um, you have a QR scanner. And the only way to add a friend on, on the platform is with their QR code, which means you are physically together in person. Um, and you can check in at restaurants in the same manner and, and see who your friends are. But none of the kind of public displays of, I don't know, plumage and, and status. So mm -hmm. that's kind of a brief rundown. No, it's, it's quite simple. And no worrying about what all your friends are doing. You can't see what they're doing. You just meet up with them to figure out what they're doing. Right. That's the beauty of it. Right. Yeah. If you if you can't see what they're doing, who cares? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Any initial thoughts, um, Professor Dunbar, on if you've seen things like this, if people have talked about things like this, if anyone's done it well? Not as such. There have been many kind of attempts that I've not seen anything close to fruition of. Uh, people who've asked me about sort of vaguely similar things that are kind of social nudges software, if you like, but I have never seen anything come out of those. Um, and I'm not sure that part of the problem, I suspect, is most of the people who had thought them up hadn't really 
thought through what they were trying to achieve in the end. Mm -hmm. So it's quite good to have something fairly, some fairly specific objective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, um, let's go to the pub or... So that's, what, that's mm -hmm. if I may, that's, um, you, you said like social nudges. I think that's what we can do really well is mm -hmm. how can we use when we just have people meeting up with their QR codes and checking in with one another, then we can start doing some really interesting things around Dunbar's number. I feel Sorry. weird saying Dunbar's number when it's just your number. Yeah, uh, that's right. <laughs> but the data is going to be the biggest part. And for us to study and tell them how they're interacting with their friends, how they can better interact with their friends as well. Who's um, drifting. Exactly. Who's drifting and how do you pull them back? Do you want to? Are you letting them drift? Because you, like yeah. you, there's only a specific amount of time you can invest in, all, in your circle. Um, so basically just have that so accessible and easy to, to understand um, that it'll improve person-to-person -person interaction. Uh, that's yeah. the goal. So I, I guess the, I think sorry. probably the, the, the right focus is to have a very small kind of group that, that is dedicated to, as it were, but one that's fairly flexible about people drifting in and out of. I only, there is one Dutch social networking site, which is sort of designed in that direction. I mean, famously, this was the reason Path was set up. I mean, you came across Path in your yeah. things, which mm -hmm. apparently sadly has demised. I'm not sure what that's telling us. But it was set up by Dave Moran, who was one of the original Facebook programmers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. along with one of the guys who set up uh, what was the music downloading system that disappeared because of, for legal reasons. Napster. Uh, Napster. John Parker. Yeah. Um, and they had the idea of trying to keep a very small group together, but it was really focused on the kind of the post Facebook generation. So if you remember Facebook is kind of dreamt up by people at your uh, life stage, as it were, just mm -hmm. graduated from college, and kind of, I guess, at the back of their minds, motivated by the fact that people, everyone is going to disappear. So how do I keep contact with my friends? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they're just going to vanish to the other side right. of America and elsewhere, all over the world, and I'll never see them again. And that was the kind of if you like, philosophy sort of behind it. Um, obviously, it's changed considerably. Uh, over time. And they went wrong. Mm -hmm. But, but um, you know, the, it was undirected. And I think the, the problem was, well, the reason why Dave Moran and, and, and the rest of them set up art was because they felt that that generation, that original Facebook generation, now reached the point where they were married and they had children and want to put their kids' photographs on, uh, 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 online for their friends to see, uh, but they didn't want them posted all over the frigging world where everybody and his auntie can, can look at them. Right. Um, and so they tried to narrow it down really tightly to, to a, a core network of 50. The punters persuaded them eventually to up that to 150. Mm -hmm. I suspect it didn't work because it kind of wasn't pitched at a group of people who necessarily wanted to maintain contact like right. that. Whereas my guess is what you're looking much more at is an active group of friends. Right. Who are, at least know, at first. Today. I think PATH actually allows you not to meet each other in person because you're perfectly fine being across the country looking at their life path. That's right. You know? Yeah. We don't, we don't allow that. So that's, that's the idea we're going to learn from it is like, how, we can't make it okay for us to not be together and just see each other's lives go by on, you know, with a bunch of pictures. So there is a, there is a Dutch one whose name escapes me right now, which okay. limits you to 12 people, Whoa. which I think is much interesting, more, very more focused on your kind of active friends at the moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm. Hello? I think you might have answered the phone. Oh, okay. You can't, can you see Dunbar or no? Uh, 
Uh, he's frozen. Yeah. Twelve people, huh? Yeah, that's. And that's what. So, well, oh, I'll wait. <laughs> very intimate. There we go. He's back. You, you're unfrozen. I was just saying, my sense is with what what you have in mind is so I'm trying to get a picture really in my head. Mm -hmm. It's something which is more that little group of kind of people you interact with on a regular basis and it's like 10 o'clock at night and you think, God, I'm bored. Uh, hey guys, anybody fancy a beer? Correct. Uh, you know, I, now I don't, my guess is the nearest you get to that is some of the kind of more messenger likes um, uh, services on, on um, um, maybe not things like FaceTime, but, but some of those others. But, but I guess this is very different from those. Well, we, we have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the master plan, there well, is the there is uh, something that helps connect people who are across the country and yeah. gives you a nudge to text them or to FaceTime mm -hmm. them or gives you points yeah. for doing so. Um, but in terms of just collecting our first bit of science, of, of data, um, mm -hmm. It's like, let's just look at how people probably on college campuses, because they're closest, yeah. okay. um, how they're interacting with one another. Exactly. I'll say too about, so the platform that's really intimate with like 12 people or 50 people, like you say, that's kind of, that was kind of the genesis of, of Dunbar for me. But then what I realized is like, we can't, we would just be creating another Facebook, another Instagram, if we allowed someone to have 50 friends. So we're like, yeah, yeah. we'll give them the QR codes and let them do that themselves. Because if they're not meeting up with someone, the data is gonna tell the real story. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was like, well, let's say you have a significant other who's in your, your friend list, 150. What happens when you break up? Do you have to you know, have this mass exodus on the app and block them? Yeah. But the, the QR codes will tell the story. Yeah. And, and I think that's what's super different here. Um, I guess one, one thing we've got to ask before, um, this ends is, can we use, we'd be honored if you'd let us use your name to, you know, for our app. We'd love to name this after you. This is all inspired by you and your number. And, uh, I think there's no better name for it. Well, uh, so long as you never get rich on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, how about this? How about this? We'd also be, we'd also love to give you a cut into the into the company because you, you we wouldn't have started this without without your theory and all your videos and all your teachings to us. We'd love to give you a portion of that equity. Okay, um, you, you can rent the name then. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it's easy as that. No, we we just thought it was a beautifully serendipitous. Um, yeah. it, it really is, uh, so, um, and that's the goal. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. We'll, we'll let you. What's that? I don't mind. You know, best of luck to you, really. <laughs> we appreciate that. Yes. When I'm old and poor, don't forget me. <laughs> oh, you're gonna you're gonna own a small portion of the company. Don't you worry. Um, well, we really appreciate your time, if if nothing else, and hopefully we we know you're very busy, but maybe we can continue to plug in as as things begin to develop and. You obviously know a whole lot more than we do about how how people interact with one another. So, yeah, sure, yeah. Um, uh, come sometime in early in the new year. Cause I'm just looking at the proofs now. I'm going to be which is just called Friends coming out. So it's kind of directed at it's kind of popular science, made by some heavy heavy duty academia, but there's lots of references in there, I had to chase up beyond it, but oh, yes, um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that you, you, you may find stuff in there when it comes out that's, that's kind of useful. Have, have you seen The Social Dilemma? I think I mentioned it when I first reached out. Yeah, you sent me the thing, I've, I've got it hauled up on my uh, uh, um, uh, uh, internet um, screen there to, to look at, but I haven't actually had a yeah, chance. Yeah, I think you'll you'll quite enjoy the it's mostly propaganda but it's important stuff <laughs> it was 
was, yeah, very alarmist. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's an alarmist world. <laughs> it is. There it is. Okay. Um, well, anyway, yeah, we'd love to, we'll, we'll follow up by email and, you know, I said it, I know I said it in a funny tone, but we're very serious. We, we'll, we're going to get with our legal team and we'd love to give you a chunk of this. Um, like I said, this wouldn't have happened without, without your inspiration. So we'll get that going and then, uh, you know, join team Dunbar, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy in, in, in that context to great, great. fight you with further advice, as they say, when you. When, when you feel the need for it. So. Excellent. Yes, Excellent. Sir. Thank you so much for these few minutes. Have, have a good uh, rest Thank of the you. evening. Have a great day. Take care. Right. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.